Hey guys, happy Saturday everyone. Welcome to our weekend episode of our daily stock market insights with Miss JD. And uh, today we're going to uh, cover uh, the uh, most trending stocks in the Philippine market. And uh, likewise, I will also be reviewing the stocks that you guys have requested. And uh, let me just check that out. Uh, let's go through the comments here. So Renee wanted to uh, review SCC and DMW. Let me just shut that down. SCC, SCC, DMW, and Mac, a reach, and DNL. So we have requests from Renee. Jobit said thank you. You're welcome. Christian uh, Lawrence. Uh, Mac, a read from David and DNL. Yeah, we'll review that. You're the only one who makes me understand reading the graph. Thank you, by the way, about uh, BSC. Someone said there would be a two disclosures. Uh, he was really sure about it. Well, let's see. Um, also, yeah, SEC, SEC, and AGI. Let me also add that. Sec B, AGI. Okay. Let me add these requests that you guys have um, added here. Meg from Furley. Um, you're welcome, Furley. And yeah, so I already have your. Um, uh, requests I'll prioritize them then once I'm done with these initial requests then I go through the uh, most trending stocks okay so before I get started guys I'm inviting everyone if you like this type of content um, I'm inviting you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you're always updated uh, whenever I have new videos last night I did a live I was just practicing a, uh, a a new uh, browser-based uh, live streaming app, StreamYard, uh, but I was uh, mostly reviewing the uh, uh, stocks in the U.S. market. So I actually had that video. Uh, I can link that here. I was um, trying to uh, document uh, my trades and the status of uh, my stocks in my U.S. Uh, portfolio in eToro. So by the way, if you want to uh, create your account, to start trading the U.S. market and cryptocurrency, um, highly recommended, guys. eToro, uh, the platform is uh, very user friendly. Uh, my referral link is down below. Also, I'd like to take this opportunity to promote my store. I am. Um, I also have a, an online shop. Uh, it's Cart Smart in Shopee, and uh, we specialize in because I so love coffee. So, I. I have a wide uh, selection of uh, branded coffee here, uh, tea, and of course some automotive automotive uh, stuff. This is from my husband and uh, some other stuff here as well. So that's my store if you want to check that out. Um, uh, the, I'm in Shopee, Cart Smart. Okay, and <clears throat> so let's get started. I would like to first talk about the index. Okay, as you can see here, looks like, so what's interesting here is that we had a breakout, but we're just uh, moving sideways over here. So if I'm to plot a, a box now, this is how it is going to look like. Okay, so this is how it is uh, currently trending, um, moving just within this range. So we really don't know if it is going to move higher or lower so it's just in the middle at the moment so uh, in case it breaks the 7208 level then chances are we might see the price uh, uh, re retracing otherwise we will have a continuation to the upside if we break out of this uh, Darvis box to the upside okay so that is the current situation of our index we're halfway there because uh, as you can see, there's still some some room for the price to uh, move even higher at this point. See that? Okay. So that's the um, 
so far this is the uh, peak of our performance around 9000 level and then we haven't really recovered since 2018 and uh, let us see with uh, the many businesses now open and the vaccine vaccine uh, still ongoing uh, so there uh, some places in uh, Europe, in the UK particularly, in the US, they've already started giving out these vaccines. And soon, we will also have them. And uh, eventually, um, I think we're, we're approaching the end of the pandemic. So that's really nice. So let us go ahead and talk about your individual stocks. Because this index is just a representation of how the uh, um, top companies in the Philippines are performing at the moment so let's uh, check them out because uh, we have to uh, understand the individual chart of each one for us to determine the direction okay so let's take a look at SCC <clears throat> SCC is currently sitting at the overbought level as you can see we are here at the overbought area and when I say overbought that means um, this is the expensive side expensive cheap this is an overbought and the people feel that this is already expensive but um take note sometimes we could uh, stay in this uh overbought level for an extended period of time as you can see here we were actually uh, uh we approached the over overbought level back in uh on the 14th of december and it's already the 19th and we're still in the overbought level so see the difference but uh, it's your call if you want to get out right away or you want to let say let it stay there for quite some time because sometimes when it retraces the re, the correction or the dip is not that significant one to two days of a dip and then it recovers right away so so it, it's a judgment call you have to understand the bigger picture sometimes for you to um, uh, realize that uh, even if this is overbought overall if you're to look at it the potential of the stock is still humongous, right? As you can see, uh, we have uh, declined significantly and we are just at the very bottom of the spectrum. And uh, there's still a lot of uh, potential for this stock to move even higher. See that? At one point, it even reached the 50s level and we're just in the 14 peso area, okay? So if you feel uh, that you'd like to stay here for uh, a longer period of time, my recommendation is probably, I know it will potentially retrace, but the nearest support that I can see, which is, uh, I think, a possibility at this point would be around this area, 1339. This is the level that, or 1327, that is the level that I see at the moment. Very near your ME20 line. Um, <clears throat> at the same time, it will give you some uh, wiggle room to uh, uh, really... Uh, catch it at a much cheaper price so it's up to you if it drops and if you you feel that 14 peso level is already an okay price considering your outlook let's say you're willing to stay there for uh six months to a year uh then that's fine uh a few what less than one peso difference will actually uh know it'll be a very unnoticeable in the future right you see that difference so uh, short term wise you are sitting at a resistance but in a long term perspective this is still a good area to buy DMW DMW uh, same uh, scenario uh, this is already at a uh, uh, resistance level I can also look at the uh, uh, kind of candlestick that we have here So this is a, an example of a shooting star. Do you see that? This is a shooting star that if it comes out at a resistance level, then it becomes a uh, sign of weakness. If you are to look at it, see this? Oh, here, that one. So that's a shooting star. And uh, currently, this is what this candlestick is showing us. It is a shooting star. You are at the overbought level, and so um, it's very obvious. Look at the the climb of 
climb of this stock of this stock for the past how many weeks? It's a very steep uh, uptrend of, um, for this stock. So I will not be surprised if this stock will be retracing for a while because people will definitely be taking profit. And um, if you want to get it at a cheaper level, uh, let us see if it will go back to the 7 peso and 50 cents area. Uh, that's the support, uh, nearest support I am looking at. Uh, overall, if you also want to check the bigger picture, there is some room for the stock to go even higher. But definitely, uh, just looking at this, looking at this uh, uh, movement for the past how many weeks, uh, it's a very steep uh, uptrend, and so it'll definitely uh, go back and uh, let's see if it'll revisit the 750 area. The next one is Mac. I know I checked this out last night. Mac also is uh, moving downwards. So we crossed the MA20 line. And um, one thing we can say that one, one thing we can say is that uh, the moment it crosses the MA20 line and starts moving downwards, your MA20 now becomes your resistance. And when we say resistance, it is like your, your ceiling that when the price hits that level, there's a rejection, right? So imagine uh, throwing the ball to your ceiling. Then, of course, there's a rejection. It goes down. In the same manner, your support is like your floor. That when you put, you bounce the ball against the floor, then there's a bounce that's happening, right? So this is what we're anticipating. I can see a continuation of the downtrend given that we, do, we don't even have a wick right here. This was an all the way um, down movement or downward movement for yesterday's um, um, market performance for MAC. So chances are it will go uh, down some more. So um, I'm thinking maybe we can check out our, because there's a uh, price that stopped right here. So around 7.30 area. Let's first see that, 7.35, I see this as a resistance level. So let's find out if it is going to stabilize right there. Uh, so one at a time, we look at per level at a time. Next would be around 6.60. But overall, um, yes, short term wise, it will retrace. Uh, but overall, if you are to look at the bigger picture, as I mentioned previously, see that at one point, the price reached uh, as high as 19 peso area. So yes, if you're going to ask me if you're willing to stay there for um, lo a much longer period of time, then uh, it is still considered cheap. The next one is a REIT. A REIT. So for those people who um, uh, doesn't know how REIT functions, uh, REIT is like uh, you are also, remember you're a part owner of a company um, once you buy some shares, right? So REIT is also uh, the same. But the main uh, business model here is that they have several buildings or uh, prop properties that are being rented out. And uh, all the, the revenue that they get, they uh, give it to you guys in a form of a dividend. So you have two ways of gaining uh, some profit here. One is the capital gains. So you buy it at a lower level or let's say you buy it at a 25 peso area and price right now is 29. And of course, the difference there will be your profit. If you're willing to stay there for a much longer period of time, then of course, uh, uh, the potential is uh, unlimited. We don't know how far it could reach in uh, the years to come. So let's say in the next one to two years, the price reaches at the 50 peso level and you bought it at 25, then you have what, 100% uh, um, gain out of the uh, investment that you placed. At the same time, uh, even if uh, you don't want to uh, exit from your position, you still have some form of revenue through the dividends that you will receive. And uh, REIT, uh, this is the first REIT company in the country. But mind you guys, in the U.S. and in the other um, uh, uh, exchanges, in the U.S., Canada, or even the U.K., their REIT 
are giving a very promising dividend uh, yield. Uh, I am currently in a position for, uh, with AGNC in the U.S. Uh, in my eToro account, and the uh, yield there, the dividend yield, is around 9% per year. So imagine that. So if I'm not, let's say I don't, I don't exit my position, I have a form of uh, compensation every month. If I, if I would just stay there. So that's a really uh, exciting, exciting uh, setup. So I'm also very interested in uh, uh, investing in REITs. See that? 9%. So I have my capital gains and then the 9% per year if I'm going to stay there for a long period of time. And look at how far it has also dropped. So I think I entered right at this level. See that? Consistently giving out. So that's the concept. Uh, it's a, also a REIT. So this one too. I think for this, uh, the... Um, Dividend yield is not uh, very, very attractive. So if uh, they're giving out quarterly, 0.28 by 0.34, around 50 cents or 60 cents. That's 2, 4, 6, around 3%. Three, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, because it's just, it's less than a year so far. So... Combining the two, 0.28 and 0.34, so that's, let's say, let's peg it at 0.60. Yeah, around 0.6. Okay, so 1% of uh, 29, then you get 0.29, right? And uh, second release, that's already uh, 1 to 3%. Let's see if in one year they could give out four releases and then we'll find out. So this is how it looks like right now. You are at the overbought. So in other words, if you're merely trading this stock, uh, this is on the expensive side right now. And this is uh, already the second day of the stock showing weakness. One, two, red. Two, second day of being red. So... Uh, I see a continuation of the downtrend here. So first possible stop would be around 29. And then next possible stop would be, uh, of course, your this level. This is where I see it. Around 27.56. But um, for those people who are interested in REIT, uh, I'm not saying this is not a good company. But right now, I would have to say uh, just... Reserve your buying power and wait for the right timing to enter for this stock. We just do not know how long it'll take for it to revisit the 29 or the 27.56 area. Hopefully it doesn't go back to this level anymore. Um, but the chances of, of uh, this price reaching the 29 would be a little higher than the chances of it dropping to 27.56. Uh, at least um, there's a big chance that you will have a continuation uh, right here, if it bounces at the 29 level. Next one is uh, DNL. DNL, okay, you have a bounce at the MA20 line, so good job. All right, so I'm now plotting a new support, which is around 7 peso and 17 cents. Uh, that's our support area, and this is an engulfing candlestick, meaning your green is like your green is bigger than your red candlestick and um, that's a confirmation that there would be a possibility that it will continue with the upside but you know um, 3.61% increase in the Philippine market <laughs> mind you guys that's already uh, a noticeable increase therefore some people might be taking profit and could bring the price back to the 717 area and then hopefully it just stabilizes there. Your trigger is when it breaks 717. You gotta decide uh, at what point is your uh, uh, risk tolerance. Are you okay to sleep at night with a 3, 5, 6% negative for this trade? If yes, then that's fine. Um, however, my take, uh, my take on this is 
you if you have already planned to exit at a certain level, let's say if I reach 6% decline, that's my hard stop. I will exit my trade. Okay, so when that thing happens, you got to do it. Otherwise, it is going to be more difficult if the decline is more than 6%. Then chances are, at that point, I'd say don't exit anymore. It's either you exit early or don't exit anymore. Because um, once you exit, that's a done deal. You have already a confirmed realized loss. So if, if your uh, outlook is, uh, let's say, years, uh, you're willing to sit on a stock for years, then uh, maybe when it declines, that will be your opportunity to add some more. Okay, so uh, that's my two cents here. The next is SecB. SecB is also, uh, I think this is not yet done with the decline. Volume is still like average, it did not even reduce almost the same level. So let's just plot it around the uh, MA20 line. Okay, that area. Okay, so this level over here. 134.98 or 135 that could be um, the next possible stop we could just be stabilizing there and then continue to move higher and higher because yes there is still some room for improvement here um, but overall we're already halfway yeah so if you want you can even wait for it to drop maybe a day or two if we have another red there that could be your uh, your trigger next one is AGI AGI also had an engulfing candlestick. Uh, some people can still trade this, you know, uh, especially the momentum traders. They still can do that even if it's already at the overbought level and uh, your RSI is already declining, as you can see here. Some can still manage to trade that. But for me, I, I'd rather stay away and uh, go enter stocks that are um, about to rise, about to go to an uptrend. But this one, this has already rallied uh, uh, so much. And uh, for me, I already find this expensive. So guys, um, these are just my thoughts, by the way. We have different profiles, remember that. I am uh, a position trader. And the reason for that is because I work, I have a full-time job, and I just do this on the side. I do not have my entire day to watch the market. Therefore, if uh, some people can trade this uh, momentum stock, so momentum stock because it has been rallying uh, for the past how many weeks or even months now. They can do that because they can watch the market. So um, whatever I say here could be a totally different approach with your profile. Okay. And so if I say this is an expensive stock, it's just I'm basing that statement on my profile. Okay. Now, um, to continue, according to my profile, I find this expensive. At the same time, I see a possibility that we will be declining soon. Because your momentum, as we go higher and higher, see that? As we go higher and higher, the momentum is starting to break, meaning starting to decline. So you have a green right here, but we don't know. We could be uh, just stabilizing uh, in that level, and then we will be... Uh, declining after that that's a possibility okay so watch out around the 1118 to uh 1172 level there 1176 area so that those areas could be your resistance levels okay there's a, a cash dividend that's that's nice but that that is not really uh, that it's very small amount comparing to the stocks in the U.S. market. So I am not really very attracted to the uh, Philippine stocks that do offer a dividend. It's just a bonus, but don't count too much on that. MAG. MAG is... Well, we're still at the resistance area. And uh, signs of weakness. These, for me, are signs of weakness. We're having a difficult time breaking it. So chances are... Any moment from now, we could see some breakdown in the price crossing the MA20 line. And probably we could be stopping at the uh, 376 level. 
375. Okay, so that could be the next uh, possible support right here, 375. Okay, so that is uh, Meg. Let's see, what about the other stocks? I want to understand um, how these stocks are trending. SMPH also, um, this is your resistance. So two things, right? Uh, two things to understand when you're dealing with resistance as a uh, uh, support. So we have actually one, two, three, third time hitting the uh, 3948 level. And each time we reach that level, there is a decline in our uh, RSI. See that? There is a decline uh, mom in momentum. Momentum is trending down while we are in here. So... Uh, there is a, a chance that we could be breaking. Actually, we already crossed the MA20 right here. Um, let me just first plot this level as the nearest support because we could just be stabilizing here. Who knows, right? Or it could drop even lower than that. And uh, that would be 3466 around that level. So this should be your nearest support provided it does not break okay but in the meantime uh, i'd say i'll observe first because uh it's a uh, make or break day probably on monday let's check out ac ac uh, extra be extra careful because uh we also broke the me 20 line and uh, we created a lower high this is a lower high Where's my dream? From here, it bounced, but it's slightly higher this time. So we have to check if it'll go back to this level. Okay, if it goes back to this level and stabilizes in this area, then good. If it breaks down, uh, uh, then we have to check again. Where could it possibly stop? Maybe 778, 780. Those are the key levels first area of support second area of support sm sm hmm looks like this is also having a difficult time breaking it uh, this is my resistance here we're also very near that resistance so find out if it will break the ma20 line if yes then chances are it would drop again this is the next drop, 969 or 972 because I see this. And this used to be a resistance and some stabilization and some uh, consolidation that's happening right here. So resistance at the 1092, 972 would be your support. Okay, so watch out. Find your area. Find your uh, entry point if you're interested in getting in this stock. Okay, I think that's for my first part. Let me just add that here. SMPH and AC and SM. Okay. So there you have it, guys. That's, um, well, it's a Saturday. I could be recording uh, a few more. Just drop a comment so that on my next review, I will prioritize your request. Um, uh, in the meantime, uh, don't forget to hit the, the like so that YouTube will discover our channel and will offer it to more viewers who are interested into uh, the stock market. Uh, also, don't forget my store, guys. You can uh, visit my store and check out my uh, merchandise here. I have uh, different brands of coffee. So if you like to, if you're a coffee lover, you'd love to, you will definitely love uh, our store here. And uh, eToro link if you'd like to uh, uh, start trading the U.S. market. My link is down below. And Patreon. I also have a Patreon. Uh, I'm starting to build a community. Uh, and uh, in my Patreon account, you will be able to get my, my picks. Uh, that I'm going to recommend some stocks that are, that are showing good setup for position traders particularly. And I do a lot of research. Uh, I put them all there. So those are my three um, areas. My store, uh, my eToro link, if you'd like to uh, create your uh, account in eToro, and then Patreon.
All right, so that's it, guys. Thank you, and bye-bye for now.